the station working for you. This is WRTV News at 530, streaming now. Now at 530, gift cards are a popular gift this time of year. One local woman spent hundreds of dollars on gift cards, and by the time she got home, the money was gone. She reached out to WRTV, and we are working for you and getting results. And the welcome mat is out. The door's just hours away from opening. Tonight, we take you inside the city's newest hotel, one that might just get you thinking about popping open a Coca-Cola. Lindsay. Topping our lineup, a group who's given us decades of important safety messages is now going to try to convince America to take a COVID-19 vaccine. We're looking at their strategy. And having trouble finding Christmas lights this year? Well, it turns out you're probably not alone. Why these festive lights are more popular than before. Also, there are concerns among some parents about the long-term impact for young kids who can't interact with others their age right now. What you need to watch for with your child's development. And now first at 530, $925. That's how much one woman saved and then lost within minutes after, after she turned that cash into gift cards. As WRTV's Rafael Sanchez reports, she reached out to WRTV for help, hoping she could still celebrate Christmas this year. Something like this would be harder to make. Lily Ogle makes jewelry at home. I love wearing jewelry. I wear a lot of jewelry. You have to run that, all those little beads. It makes a woman feel really good to have a nice, pretty piece of jewelry. I love my pink pearls with the abalone. It just makes her feel a little more bouncy. The cash from her creations, which are sold around the world, help pay the bills. I've sold a lot of pieces in California and Florida. I've sold pieces in Denmark, Finland, Germany, um, just all over. I use um, real stones. I use onyx and abalone and pearl and mother of pearl, uh, jade, um, just all kinds. Last year, she saved $925. That $925 meant to buy Christmas gifts for her family. It took me all year to save that money. So she bought $925 in Amazon gift cards at her local Kroger store. And then this happened. I got home about 20 minutes later and tried to use uh, those cards and they said they had already been used. And I'm like, that's impossible, I just got them. She says that Amazon told her they could not help because she did not buy the cards directly from them. Though she had her receipts, Kroger tells WRTV it could not help because gift cards are like cash. The cards cannot be replaced and no refunds can be made. Also, cashiers have no way to know if the gift card belongs to the person presenting it or to someone else, since the cards have no names on them and no ID is required for their use. I'm not trying to get more than what I paid for the cards, but I feel like I deserve the $925 back that I put out for the cards. Working for you, Rafael Sanchez, WRTV. Rafael reached out to com the company that oversees the Amazon cards. That company is Black Hawk Network. They could not provide specifics on what happened to Mrs. Ogle's cards, but reviewed our request and in the end refunded the $925. The company told WRTV, quote, we can share that we are in contact with her to resolve this matter to her satisfaction. Our advice to any cardholder that may have questions, concerns, or suspicions about a card is that it's very important to call the customer service number on the back of the card immediately. We also have processes to help victims of fraud through restitution when appropriate. However, we don't go at it alone. The Blackhawk partners with law enforcement in our various geographies and retail industry organizations to enable a safer shopping environment for consumers, end quote. We have more safety tips provided by Blackhawk in our story. You will find that on the WRTV app. Kevin. I always, Amanda, loves staring at the horizon right at sunset or just after, and that's the beautiful orange glow that you see as we look beyond White River, the Indianapolis Zoo. To the west, okay, a dry night tonight, dry tomorrow. It's cold now. We'll wake up to about 10 degrees colder in many spots. I just want to show you the colder air is oozing all the way to the deep south. Nashville's at 35. Our temperatures eventually recover late in the week into the weekend. Tomorrow, another cold day. We'll start in the mid-20s, mostly cloudy through the day. 
the wind generally east at about 10 miles per hour will nudge our way above the freezing mark, but not much more than that. The focus then changes to our snow potential on Wednesday. Again, not talking about anything heavy, but always is a big deal for the first snow. And I always think the longer we wait for a first event, then the bigger it becomes, but generally an inch, maybe a little less in some spots. Across the country today, the 538 electors who make up the Electoral College met to cast their ballots for president. Maya Rodriguez spoke to two of them. After millions upon millions of Americans cast their ballots on Election Day, the final vote for president that really counts comes down to 538 people who make up the Electoral College. Marla Blunt Carter is one of them. That thought of our ancestor who couldn't even write his name um, signing his voter registration card at a time where really their vote didn't count um, to being someone that is now voting in this electoral process, it's indescribable. Blunt Carter is one of the three electors from Delaware. All three are Democrats because President-elect Joe Biden won his home state. To be one of three that represents the Delaware voter that calls him their own is just huge and then you look at the fact that the vice president elect is a woman of color that is doubly uh, amazing for me while she was selected by delaware democratic party officials to be an elector in other states you have to run for the privilege so in our long history as a country, there have been very few people that have actually served in this role. In North Carolina, Jonathan Fletcher ran at the Republican State Convention. He'll cast his vote for President Trump, who carried the state. It's kind of a lifelong dream. I, I joke that it's a, a short lifelong dream because I'm only 28, but it is a lifelong dream of mine. But the Electoral College and the popular vote don't always match up. It's happened five times in the country's history, twice in the 21st century, in 2000 and 2016. Some say that's unfair and are calling for the Electoral College to be abolished. So how do these electors feel about it? States like North Carolina, who are kind of middle of the pack in the electoral shuffle, it gives us a lot, a, a more equal standing with the rest of the country. I understand that people think that it is, it is uh, far past the time where we start to look at doing this differently. Um, but that's not the job of the electorate. That's the job of the legislators. But for now, it's the system in place. When it comes to choosing who gets to call the people's house, home. In Washington, I'm Maya Rodriguez. More in our lineup. A group who's given us decades of important safety messages is now going to try to convince America to take a COVID-19 vaccine. Ahead, their strategy. I would definitely take the COVID vaccine. I think that vaccines are important for um, the community and the well-being globally. I would not take the COVID vaccine. I don't think it's been thoroughly tested enough. And I would take the vaccine because I really like to travel and I like going to school. I would not take the COVID vaccine. Why? Because I don't feel like I need it. There are a lot of mixed feelings about the COVID-19 vaccine and why people would or would not take one. But health experts say we'll need them to achieve herd immunity and to get back to a more normal life. There's really a deep empathy for the hesitancy people are feeling. This is a big deal. It's normal to have questions about what's going on. And we just want people to get the information they can to make empowered choices for them and their families so we can really get back to what matters most for each and every one of us. The Advertising Council is the agency behind decades of important messages like friends don't let friends drive drunk. And now they're working on likely one of the most important campaigns of this generation, convincing people to take a COVID-19 vaccine. Right now it's in the early stages of research and won't roll out on TV, radio and online until early next year when a vaccine is more widely available. But you can expect a lot of different spokespeople from doctors and pharmacists to athletes and musicians. The messenger in this case is going to be even more important in some ways than the actual message itself. There will also be variations of the COVID-19 vaccine campaign to address specific groups like communities of color. They've been impacted more severely by the virus and tend to have more vaccine hesitancy. So partnerships in the messaging will be important. 
We know that you know these on the community level, um, people are already turning to churches and nonprofits and trusted messengers on issues like healthcare, hope, inspiration, and all of them are really going to have to be messengers on this important campaign to break through to get people the information they need. According to recent Pew Research, only about 60% of adults say they would get a vaccine, and health experts have said that we would likely need between 70 and 80% to get close to herd immunity. Ahead in our line of sales of Christmas lights, way up this year because of the pandemic, the deeper meaning that these lights are taking on. This year has brought a lot of changes for everyone, and there could be a chance that those changes could translate into savings on your insurance policies. Bankrate is encouraging people with home and car insurance to take a fresh look at their policies. You could save anywhere from a few dollars to a few hundred dollars, but it is going to depend on the location. It's going to depend on your lifestyle, what's changed versus the past. So it is worth comparing and really kicking the tires on various different insurance policies from different companies. There are several lifestyle changes that could have happened this year. Many people took on home improvement projects during the pandemic, and some of those may have included adding safety features to your home, which can help save money on home insurance. And a lot of us are driving a lot less now, which can also help car insurance rates. If you're working from home, like a lot of us, you're probably driving significantly less than you used to. And that's something that you want to bring up to your insurance carrier because that could significantly reduce uh, the amount of money that you pay for your premium. Insurance policies haven't necessarily changed, but the way insurance companies look at lifestyle changes may have changed. So it's worth checking in on your policies. Experts at Bankrate suggest doing so at least once a year. We're getting a new reality check on the impact the pandemic is having on teachers. Nearly 27% of K-12 educators in a new survey say that they're considering leaving the profession or taking a leave of absence. That survey was put out by the Horace Mann Educators Corporation. 77% of the teachers in the survey say they're working more than a year ago, and 60% say they have less job satisfaction. Well, it's not just companies struggling during the pandemic. Nonprofits are also in need. The Salvation Army has reported they're down nearly 20% in funding this year. They only expect to raise half of the money they typically collect from the Red Kettle campaign. Nonprofits are also experiencing a higher demand for their services. Meals on Wheels reports they've already served 77% more meals than they did in 2019. The nonprofit tracker Candid has projected that 7% of all nonprofits in the country may close as a result of the pandemic. The city's newest boutique hotel will start checking in its first overnight guest tomorrow. But before they arrive, we got to check out the brand new Bottle Works Hotel today on the north end of Mass Ave downtown. The Bottle Works Hotel is one of the main components of the $300 million redevelopment of the 1930s Coca-Cola bottling plant. In addition to the hotel, it will include a theater, food hall, shops, parking, garage, and more entertainment. The hotel features 139 rooms. At the main entrance, a hand railing winds up the hotel staircase in a decorated stairwell that resembles soda fountains, while the ceiling resembles fizz. This was already a project that was happening prior to, to, to COVID, but obviously I think this really makes people really mindful of how they're spending their time outside of, of the home, as well as where they're spending their dollar. They're gonna want an experience rather than just a cookie cutter hotel or a cookie cutter experience. They want something really special, and I think that's something that we're delivering with this property. Guest rooms start at around $250. The garage food hall, only steps away from the hotel, is set to open in January. Kevin, a lot to look forward to. Yes, something to look forward to there. And I wanted to ask you, looking back to last Friday, how did it go for the toy drive, Skating with Nitro? Kevin, it was so much fun, and I have to say it was so nice to have a little bit of normalcy with everything going on. What I was more nervous was for the shooting the puck in the second intermission. Now, that was hard. <laughs> that was the hard part, being yeah, on the was... ice without my skates on and a hockey stick. Ah, isn't that funny? Uh, comfortable doing the triple saw cow, but not firing a shot on goal. Let's talk about the beautiful sunset in progress, and actually it's happened, but we still have some light on the horizon. Cold and colder for tonight, down into the mid-20s. Tomorrow, lots of cloud cover, but dry. Temperatures mid-30s.
That's kind of optimistically in the mid 30s for the afternoon high. Focus then shifts as we get to Wednesday. I think in the southern half of the state, we wake up to some light snow, but notice how this is kind of clipping, uh, say Terre Haute, to Indianapolis to uh, Richmond first half of the day spreads out a little more after that but that's the key to this is being on the western edge how much snow will we see in the central Indiana versus the eastern portion of the state right now we'll go with about an inch the empty vial from the first dose of the Pfizer vaccine given in the UK will be on display at a London museum the vial and syringe will join a collection at the Science Museum early next year Open enrollment for health care ends tomorrow in 36 states. Nearly 4 million people chose Obamacare plans as of last week. Enrollment is taking place as the Supreme Court considers the fate of the health care reform law. More than 8,000 retailers in the U.S. have closed or have plans to close. That's according to new data from Coresight Research. The company, which owns stores like Ann Taylor and Loft, has closed the most locations. Researchers say the U.S. is on track for a record-breaking year in store closures. Business experts are optimistic that pent-up demand and the holiday season are a good combination for businesses and those looking for work. The changes many companies have already been through have prepared them for recovery in the long run. And there's encouragement for those looking to start something new. Some of the biggest companies this country has ever had have been started during uh, pandemic periods and periods of great economic recession or depression. That business expert has a free two-week self-paced class that teaches people how to turn an idea into an actual business plan. It's called Network for Teaching Entrepreneurship, and you can find it at nfte.com. Having trouble finding Christmas lights this year? Well, it turns out you're not alone. Sales are skyrocketing, and part of the reason has to do with COVID. Chris Conti shines a light on what's happening. If Santa were to find his way to Baltimore, Maryland, 34th Street might be the perfect place to land. Had to have a little joy, so we put the lights up. And Bob Hosier. This is insane. Might be the perfect person to welcome him to the neighborhood. One city block that for a month a year, everybody comes out and makes this. This is a sight to behold. 34th Street and 1981 was the first time Bob Hosier strung up a strand of Christmas lights. It's been a terrible year. And this year, more than ever, he knew his gift to the world had to shine. With the amount of people out of work, the kids that aren't going to have a great Christmas, this is free. Don't cost anything. Candy cane! And look at Do you hear that? No amount of social distancing can dim this display. And Turns out, though, Bob Hosier isn't alone in his love for light. Sales of Christmas lights in this country are up some 20% in 2020. Put a little joy on the kids' faces, yeah, and you only have to pull one string of lights up. But the holidays aside, there might be something much deeper at play that helps explain Americans' newfound fascination with Christmas lights this year. It's far easier to understand anything when you can turn the light on. In a year defined by darkness, psychology professor Christine Bacho sees a reason behind those skyrocketing light sales. The holidays themselves then are wonderful social or community markers for time. It reminds us that there's a cycle to nature. With so many of our routines upended, putting up lights can be a marker in time, a way for our subconscious to reset. None of us can stop time. None of us can reverse it. But when you put up those lights, in a way you're saying, but I have control over this. I'm going to tell the world that, hey, it's time to take a break. One other thing Bob Hosier learned long ago, looking at lights is like standing in a museum and analyzing a piece of art. Pretty humbling the amount of people come by and see this, believe me. It's an act of hope, and we all are anticipating the end of the pandemic. So this takes on more meaning, more purpose. In a year that has seen its fair share of darkness. A turning thing! <laughs> a turning thing! It made me dizzy. Perhaps these tiny little bulbs are lighting the way forward. But a little bit of light just shines that much brighter. In Baltimore, Maryland, I'm Chris Conti. Finally in our lineup, there are concerns among some parents about the long-term impact for young kids who can't interact with others their age right now. What you need to watch for with your child's development.
This is the week to get any holiday gifts in the mail that need to go. Tomorrow is the Postal Service's cheapest deadline to get gifts somewhere in time for Christmas. Friday, if you're willing to pay a little bit more. And after that, there are only a few options that will likely be very expensive. You can do all of this online as well, ordering free priority boxes, printing shipping labels, and buying postage. Target is reducing its special shopper hours from two days a week to just one. Most stores are now allowing shoppers ages 65 and older, pregnant women, and those at risk to shop early on Tuesdays. There's growing concern among parents that the pandemic will impact development for their kids. It hasn't just been COVID, right? Um, we've learned to, you know, our youngest children have learned to fear other human beings. Dr. Katherine hirsch Pasick is a professor of psychology and senior fellow at the Brookings Institution. She describes the current environment as a social hurricane. Toddlers can't interact with each other, and they pick up on the fear that their parents may have. We may think that we hide all of this from our children, but a lot of times we don't. hirsch Pasick thinks most toddlers will recover in their developmental process. Eventually, they'll be back on playgrounds or in schools, learning and socializing with other kids and adults. But kids from families that have been more seriously impacted by the pandemic may struggle more, especially kids whose parents lost their jobs or who come from underserved communities that have been hit harder by the virus. There will be some gaps they're going to have to overcome. And I think we need to be prepared with mental health professionals to, to help all those children thrive. As Hirsch Pasek points out, history has taught us that most kids are resilient. We lived through other crises before. In the meantime, parents can help kids navigate how they're staying connected without face-to-face -face interactions. Being together is a big part of the holiday season, especially for worshipers. Tomorrow, how some are finding non-traditional ways to keep traditions alive this Christmas. Well, it was nice to see that late day sunshine. It will be replaced by clouds tomorrow. Mostly cloudy. We start cold 24 in the morning, 34.